Hello, this is Charting Man Dan of The Chart Guys, where we teach the little guy and girl how to utilize charts to manage their own trades and investments. What do I mean by the little guy and girl? Well, we just had two directives signed halting the implementation of a rule that requires financial advisors to act in the best interests of their client. Let that sink in a little bit. The big wigs on Wall Street can play with your retirement and hard-earned money without your best interests at heart. We currently have hundreds of members taking charge of their financial future, and we would love for you to come check out a free week with no credit card required to see if our services would be beneficial on your path to financial independence as well. What we offer, we have a separate course of over five hours in length on when to enter and exit positions. And in terms of what we do daily, we have nightly videos, key levels updated each morning before the bell, two and a half hours of live daily web webcam coverage in the morning and in the afternoon, and over seven hours of educational videos. All of these links can be found in the description of this video. Come check us out. Thanks for watching. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Hello, gold friends. Checking in on gold, the dollar miners heading into the weekend. So the dollar pulled back today after five green days in a row. Some normal healthy consolidation, but it was pretty extended in terms of the size of the pullback we saw during one day. So we look at the hourly time frame and we saw a pretty big dump, a weak bounce attempt, rejections from the 10 period, 10 hour resistance. Then we had a reaction in the afternoon to Yellen speaking, and we were all over the place there with a lot of range, but we ended up bearish and then dumping towards the end of the day. So this weakness allowed a lot of commodities to run, and we've been seeing a, a band of commodities here with oil, natural gas, and the precious metals all trading inverse to the dollar, and they're doing more so together as a group than they have in the recent past. So the fact that the dollar was pulling back today, we saw oil with an oversold bounce after it saw a dump. We saw gold and silver with an oversold bounce after they saw a dump and natural gas has been during has been playing out with an oversold bounce for a few days now at this point but this was a week day and we closed week but we are oversold on the hourly time frame for the dollar so sunday night we will be looking for an oversold bounce and we'll see how we shape up as we head into monday morning so there were a couple signals for these bounces in miners and the first was I had a downtrend line here in terms of a steep downtrend line, and I have a less steep downtrend line hitting some of the other lower highs. But with this one and the reaction to Yellen, we had a rejection and a lot of back and forth. But by the time the candlestick closed, obviously you can see here, we closed above this downtrend resistance line. What also stood out was volume. Volume precedes price is a saying I'm sure you've heard before. And this volume spike was definitely due to the volatility with Yellen speaking at 1 p.m., but we saw the big spike in volume. We closed above that downtrend resistance line. And then we saw that powerful follow through for the bulls on the hourly time frame towards the upside. And during that move, we saw the junior miners and the senior miners, JNUG and NUGT, after rejecting from their 20 period hourly resistance. And we use that moving average a lot on the hourly time frame. It helps us gauge whether or not the bounce is just an oversold bounce or if it actually has some momentum behind it. So we saw this oversold bounce attempt start today, but we rejected from that hourly 20 period resistance on multiple candlesticks. And then here we finally closed above that downtrend downtrending resistance level, the moving average. We closed above it and then saw some nice follow through and there were five minute bull flags with continuation. So the bull miners saw a nice second half of the trading day on the reaction to Yellen. So there was silver, silver saw the same kind of breakout same thing with the volume on silver. And before we even broke the lower high pattern, we had a ton of volume. We closed strong on that candlestick. And then we had the big time breakout. And if you wanted to be a very cautious trader on the silver break, you were looking here at 1783. That was the highest price after the dump that the bounce attempt got to. Then we saw lower lows. So as soon as we break 1783, there is not a lot of resistance in this zone because we had an absolute dump. And we didn't stair step our way down building resistance levels. So as soon as we break 1783, if you were a really cautious trader, that was your entry signal. And you saw an 11, 12 cent move to the upside in an hour. And there were some nice gains to be had there. If you were trading USLV, a three times bull for silver, that would have been some nice gains to the upside. Being a very cautious trader, that trade would have been there. So we did see some oversold bounce on these, these precious metals. And the question is, is it real can we trust this move and i'm looking at the four hour chart i'm looking for a bullish macd cross as we head into the open monday morning if we get this bullish macd cross we will be looking for some continuation but look at this four hour chart every bounce attempt has not formed higher lows 
So we had our bounce attempt and then a dump and a lower low, a bounce attempt, a dump and a lower low, no higher lows are being established. So now we need a bounce attempt, a pullback, but not a dump, no lower low. We need a higher low and then a higher high. And that higher low and higher high is going to indicate that this bounce is more than just an oversold bounce and that we have some momentum behind it. So I'm going to be watching this longer term downtrend resistance line on the hourly. Bulls need to get over that level to prove some strength. And then we have all kinds of resistance level on the way back up. 1242.33, 1250.50, 1258.33. So where did this leave us? It left us with a bullish reversal candlestick on the daily time frame. I was pointing out the level that the bulls needed to hold of 1225.77 to remain with their higher low strong uptrend. We did dip below that level by a couple dollars, but very clearly the bulls bought the dip. And this is a bullish reversal candlestick. And this support line here, not really sure where it came from, actually, to be honest. Need to look back. It's been there for a while. And it looks like it was from just the daily level where we had a lot of price action around that support line. And if we look at the daily chart, we can see we had a close above it, a couple candlesticks. We lost it, rejected, resistance got back above it and acting as support. And we have held this level now on the daily time frame, one, two, three, four, five, and now six candlesticks that have tested it. So daily support line holding here, bullish reversal, dragonfly doji, must see a green day on Monday to confirm it. Same thing I said Thursday night, bullish reversal, hammer, little dragonfly doji almost, must confirm it, and we did not. So now we must confirm it again. Monday is a pretty important day for these precious metals. Let's see that silver daily candlestick, same bullish reversal candlestick, not the same doji, but it is a bullish reversal candlestick that needs some confirmation. And look at the encouraging volume for the bulls, all out dump volume, higher volume we had here for the bulls. And again, a lot of that's because of the volatility with Yellen speaking, but the bulls will take it as we have a lot more bull volume than we do bear volume the past two weeks on silver. So where does this leave us with the miners? We have a bullish reversal candlestick again, just like we did on Thursday. Same story as gold. We must confirm it on Monday with another green day to prove that this is more than just an oversold bounce. We still have a lower high pattern on the daily time frame. We've seen six days in a row now with lower highs. So the bulls must break 2247 on Monday, and we'll be looking at just each lower high every day as resistance, 2268, 2317, 2342. I'm more concerned with the price action at this point than these moving averages. We do have some moving average resistance mixed in here as well, but I'm just looking at the lower high pattern on the daily time frame. That's what is most important to me heading into this next week. We need to break that lower high pattern for the bulls and start forming some higher highs. We've also seen lower lows six days in a row as well. Weekly time frame, bouncing off the 200 week moving average. The volume is very concerning here for the bulls. So before this candlestick this week, we had normal healthy consolidation and it was nice low volume, nice and contained. And now that has all changed. And a viewer brought it to my attention that in the four days that we saw the miners dump was the four days that the prices, or I should say the percentage chance of a rate hike in March went from 30% to 70%. So thanks for pointing that out. That's definitely relevant as it does show that it caught the bulls by surprise and we saw a race to the exit as everybody started to assume that we were going to see a rate hike. So what that tells me is the market is pricing in a March rate hike here for these miners. And if we do not see a rate hike in March, we can expect these miners to see a pretty solid bull move as the market will adjust. And right now it is pricing in that rate hike. So the market we can assume is assuming that a rate hike is coming. So the weekly time frame bounced off that 200 week moving average of 2175, but we did lose that middle Bollinger band. So bulls need to continue to hold this 200 week going forward. GDXJ, same story, lower highs and lower lows need to confirm the bullish reversal candlestick. And we need to see the break of the lower high pattern. We came very close to keeping this middle Bollinger band on the weekly time frame of 3564 fell thir or 11 cents below it didn't touch that 200 week we're well above that level same thing with volume look at how huge that volume is only a little bit of that lower wick is bulls buying the dip the vast majority of that volume does belong to the bears so that's not an ideal scenario for the bulls one thing that i want to point out that i noticed so let's look at the daily chart volume gdx we had high bear volume decreasing bull volume and some pretty solid bull volume today but it was lower than both of the bear volume days we look at gdxj same story, big bear volume, decent bull volume today, but lower than the two bear volume days. We look at NUGT, same story, decent volume, but lower than the two 
spare days. Look at JNUG. JNUG, that is a very clear discrepancy. That's a ton of bull volume, and that is absolutely worth noting. So the main factors that move these miners, as we keep highlighting, is gold, the dollar, the market, and of course the fact that it is a, a traded ETF here with buying and selling su supply and demand of shares. So this is telling me if this volume is correct, and I'm assuming it's not an anomaly here in, in an incorrect chart, but this is absolutely standing out because we do not see this in GDXJ. So this tells me it's specific to JNUG, and there is a lot of buying Huge volume today. Highest volume we've seen in over three months. And the vast majority of that favors the bulls. So very interesting, keeping a close eye on it. We saw JNUG dump the hardest on this big pullback. But this volume, let's see if volume precedes price again. And let's see if we see a big magnified reaction to the upside on Monday with some nice follow through. Definitely worth noting these discrepancies whenever you're comparing things and looking for correlations. So let's see how that plays out this coming week. I appreciate you watching and I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.